After surgery, the patient is transferred to the ICU or intensive care unit. ICU nursing entails critical care assessment and intervention. Cardiopulmonary support, wound management, and pain control are key areas for intervention. Reports from the OR nurse, the anesthesiologist, and the surgeon will include the type of surgery performed, any complications, intake and output, and any post-operative orders. Continuous blood gas and hemodynamic monitoring with titration of IV medications is required in order to keep the patient within prescribed parameters. Invasive monitoring lines will be connected to allow for continuous readouts of arterial blood pressures and pressures within the heart. Multiple intravenous lines will be in place for fluid replacement, possible blood transfusions or vasoactive drugs to maintain or lower blood pressure as prescribed by the surgeon. The arterial line is connected for close monitoring of blood pressure. The pulmonary artery catheter will provide pulmonary artery pressure or PAP, pulmonary artery wedge pressure or PAWP, cardiac outputs and patient temperature. Usually an arterial blood gas, or ABG, portable chest x-ray, and 12 lead EKG are ordered upon the patient's arrival in the ICU to evaluate initial post-op status. Lab results must be checked, including hemoglobin, potassium, magnesium, EKG, x-rays, and glucose. If abnormalities are present, additional assessment is necessary to determine the cause and action taken to correct the problem. The patient's wounds should be assessed for bleeding. Close monitoring of the patient's intake and output is required. This includes recording the color and quantity of chest tube drainage and urine output. Frequent head-to-toe reassessment of the patient is necessary. The patient's mental status should, of course, be closely observed until the effects of the anesthesia have worn off. But close, continuing observation of mental status is also important because changes can signal complications such as shock, delirium, or cerebral embolism. Frequent respiratory assessments should be performed with the goal of weaning the patient from the ventilator as soon as possible. Okay, by you. Frequent position changes to prevent skin breakdown and respiratory complications are necessary. Put this one under your leg. There you go. Are you breathing? Put this on your chest here because I'm going to have you... Following cough. removal of the endotracheal tube and use of mechanical ventilator, begin incentive spirometer exercises. The patient's family is no doubt anxious to see the patient. This is a good time to review areas of patient care for which the family will be responsible and to instruct both patient and family of the treatment progress. Pain medication is offered to make the patient as comfortable as possible under the circumstances and to allow active participation by the patient in pulmonary hygiene activities. Finally, offer the patient ice chips and liquids with the goal of progressing to a regular diet as soon as the patient can tolerate it.